Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Wow, so I don't think we actually made an announcement tonight, right? Is this an I didn't. somehow I didn't see one. I, I am impressed, Randall, that you are you know, here watching us even though we It's funny because Randall still posted in our chat that he thought that we were going to have a last minute cancellation, even though we did it officially even <laughs> schedule that we were going to do it. I mean, that's based on the way that we've been going lately, that's probably not a bad call. He so. still found it in his heart to doubt us. Even yeah. though we had well, I mean, that's the safe bet. Again, oh my goodness, based on recent, you know, recent observations, like we, we had a good run going for like three years and then somehow this last month, it's just all went to, all went to crap. But <clears throat> All the self-deprecating humor. Y'all sound like professors mm -hmm. up in here. Yeah. So... Yeah, so anyway, uh, tonight we are doing the um, round robin thing that I guess we started, I don't know, whenever it was. And then we went the back to all style. of you doing the same thing, the oof style. One one round oof style. That's what we're doing. Combining the shows together because we don't have time for two shows. Tonight it's around Rob Ed because Rob is Ed, the show. I guess I could have said <laughs> round, round Rob on and it would have sounded like I was being fancy. Yes. And slightly drunk. So, but thank you, Rob, for joining us. Christian, of course, was on vacation or something. I don't know. Um, that's what he said. He he probably assumed we weren't going to have a show, so he didn't show up. But Rob did, so there we go. I mean, my I like probably doesn't, goes, doesn't fit the format, but I'm going to do it anyways. So, Our format doesn't fit us. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny when I, I was catching up on episodes recently. So I watched a bunch in a row, and... Y'all announced the format change and then did it once. And then it was like, <laughs> y'all And then it all aligned up, you know, just so happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and y'all had the thing where y'all right. did the rock, paper, scissors, and y'all picked the same thing. And then the next week, y'all picked different things, which doesn't work for three people doing <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Uh, just, I thought that was interesting. Uh, just the way the dice rolled. We're amazing. Yes. Yep, yep. So, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> all right. So I don't know, uh, Anna. I don't know if you want to go ahead and go first, or or do you want to leave? Sure. You last? Okay. It, it, one way or the other. I mean, I'm probably going to talk a medium amount, but you guys probably won't like say anything. So I might just talk a normal. <laughs> there we go. You, you guys will me? discourage me. You'll be like, stop talking now, Anna. Someone else's turn. All right, so I'm going to finally talk about this model kit. Is this the Flame flame Toys? Yeah, this is the Flame Toys Windblade. Finally. Came out with a model was, kit? Yeah. She was announced sometime in, like, the 1990s, I think. And there was this big, big hullaboo about her being Is she going with the butt cheeks? She has butt cheeks, yeah. She yeah. does. She does got some butt. That's all I remember. Yeah, yeah. Can you see your butties? Okay. Uh, I'll right see that booty. Oh, see? There you go. Yeah. So she caused this huge ruckus because here we have one blade who was all about you know bringing in a woman character, having a woman write for her in her first comic book appearance, and being actually independent and kind of running the show of her own story and everything. It was really cool. And I actually really like the, at least the original One Blade miniseries from IDW was really cool. And the art in it was great. And it was fun. And it caused a lot of problems for people to see her like this as a more, you know, like not so much... Okay, so you guys know I also play an anime world, right? Like, I, I like anime. I collect anime figures. This is no Nicey, right? Nicey right. Is, is, as I like to gripe about constantly, a boob monster, right? Like, I mean, just, just look at this comparison, right? Nicey She's falling out of her is, shirt. Right. She is falling out of her shirt, which she's not even wearing one. She's wearing underpants and... 
she has a, a sculpted detail in her crotch area that she doesn't need. Like, this is a sexualized action figure right here. Right. It is, like, on the border of being a little too problematic for me to own. But for some reason, I do. Because I still think it's a very good toy. But Windblade, like, it just never bothered me. Right? Like, I know a lot of people got really upset about this figure. But I just I, I don't I think excited the outrage, about it myself. Like, there was definitely some bitching and moaning, but not as much as for Nicey. So, you know, if you consider no, Nicey on that one end, that. maybe she's more, like, maybe that, that the outrage was proportional or whatever. But she's definitely, she just has, you know, kind of more standard feminine shape, which you can't avoid when they, our robots are made to be humans. Right, and that's kind of like, if I, if I had any of my other Flame Toys kits over here, I would bring them over. I have I have two Optimi. But, you know, both of them have more, like, traditional man proportions. You know, like, they have they have kind of abs and kind of, like, the, the <coughs> big muscular heroic shoulders going on. Like, they're made more like a human male than most Transformers are. And she is made more like a human female than most Transformers are. And I, I get... That that can be a little like off-putting at first, but it's really not to an offensive level, you know. Like she has a molded butt detail, she has the thin waist, she has molded breasts. All of those are, you know, for some reason type of deals. But and it's a cartoon robot, whatever. I think the overall effect is a really cool looking figure, though. Like I really like how she came out. I think she came out very nice looking. Very well detailed. I know the head is not showing, so we're going to lower a little bit. But um, I have to say, like, there's quite a few things on this. I think they did a really good job on. Just the overall deco is good. Deco, however you want to say that word. Um, they put, like, I know a lot of us avoid model kits in this fandom. Um, a lot of model kits come with absolutely no paint on them, like most do. And she actually came with a decent amount of paint pre-applied. Like some of the blue details are pre-applied. Some of the white details on the back are pre-applied. So that's actually pretty cool that so she came with some paint. Did you paint any of that? I actually did paint some of it, which I, I guess I'll go ahead and jump to that. Well, they did go ahead and put in some of the painted details, which are really cool. And there is one detail that is usually done with stickers that they didn't do with stickers. And that is, I don't know if you can see them very well, but her eyes are actually a plastic, clear plastic piece that is actually very like, you know, translucent and shiny looking that is pressed into her head. A lot of time on like Gundam kits, they use just foil stickers on the eyes. And you have one try to get that tidy sticker on there. And it'll look fantastic if you do it well. And like a trash fire if you do it poorly and you don't get the sticker back. So instead of that stress, it just had a plastic piece, which was so cool. Like it looks really nice. But then they give me this, right? Fade of foil stickers. And right. you may be able to see the round gold stickers just all stuck back on there after I got pissed off at them. Because <laughs> a round sticker that thin is so easy to fold back on itself. Like, it is so hard to apply. And you're trying to apply it on these inner grates on her wings, right? They go there. And I just tossed the stickers and did it with paint. And it, it looks fine with paint. It wasn't that hard to paint. It just was not a good sticker idea, right? Like, that was definitely yeah, that something they terrible. could have repainted and done for us. Or they could have just told us, deal with it and paint it. Because <laughs> that would have been fine with me because it's what I ended up doing <laughs> anyway. So that that's one problem I had with her. The other problem I have with her, and I think that's just kind of a QC thing on these kits. And I feel like, you know, Christian and I have complained on the show before about Flame Boys kits. Like, compared to a lot of the Bandai kits we're both used to, me with Gundams and him with Eva, um, they're not quite as, like, fun to put together. And it's not so much the difficulty. A lot of it's, like, the sprue arrangement and the steps and everything are kind of all over the place. But um, I feel like they're getting better as they go 
on making better I was better surprised kids. that this is what you brought out because I feel like the few times I've heard someone on the cast mention uh, Flames Toys model kits, it's usually in the I'll never put this together or I'll never finish this is like the other half of that sentence. And so you're like, hey, yeah, look, I, I did this. I built it and I even me. put paint naps on it. So. Yeah, I actually built this like the day after I got it, I think, because I was really oh. excited about this one. It is a um, it is a really cool kit and it's something I'd been waiting for so long because the controversy just got me more excited. Right. Like, of course it, was it did. Just, it was just fun for me to have the controversy, and I really like it because it's an interesting, I don't know, it's just an interesting design overall. But the only other problem I have with it is kind of a QC thing, and that's, for me, one of her arms doesn't peg in right. And I'm sure that most people's are going to, and then some people are going to get a bum piece like I did, but I've taken it apart and put it back together a couple times and made sure I trimmed the sprues and everything. And just like this pops out super easy when I pose it. So she doesn't quite get to be that posable action figure level of complete model that I want her to be. Like my other Flame Toys kids, I can pose around a lot more. Her, it's like everything but that arm moves really well. And um, yeah, those are my like two problems with theirs. One, the stickers are a joke. And... <laughs> It's, they're yeah. just they're so small. Like thin so stickers small. in general are bad. The foil stickers are always bad. And then any of them that have curves, much less a freaking circle, much less a freaking thin circle. Like, what are you doing, guys? It's like there's been a couple times where you get a sticker that goes over like a molded area. And it's like it's going to be wrinkly. It's unavoidable to be wrinkly when they do that. It just seems like another case of those. Why did you make this a sticker? This was never and going she has to spots be. like that too, and like um, oh, these spots over are really rounded. super bold. Um, those are like recessed pieces, like little tiny recessed parts where you're just supposed to get a gold sticker in there. I didn't even bother. I just got a paint marker and I just shoved it in there and did it that way, and it looks fine. So um, that's my big recommendation on her is toss the stickers. And Jeremiah in the chat commented that Flame Toys stickers are just awful. So. <laughs> This is the first time I've tried to use them because I, well, I think I did put them on my first Optimus. I think I put a couple on them, but then the second Flame Toys kit was the one I did at um, TFCon uh, last year or whatever. Um, yeah, it was last year when we did the the make make a black Optimus into a blue Optimus and then put some sand on them. Oh, the custom um, class. Yes, the custom class. And that was a custom, so I didn't need stickers because I painted it anyway. But this is the first time I really wanted the stickers to go on. And I just said, screw it and threw them away. So I didn't really throw them away. I kept them so I could show them to people as a sacrifice. But I really yeah. like it. It's really good. Um, where did I put her swords? She came with two of her sword. Um, it's a nice looking little sword. You know, there's not a lot to it. It's just a nice sword. Um, it does fit in her hand just fine. Unfortunately, the hand I have to hold it right now is the bad arm, so I'm not going to show her holding it right now because her arm's just going to go on a little Did trip. Come with a you. scabbard as well. Uh, that, uh, you know, that's an excellent question. I don't remember. I don't think so. Actually, I just remember that from her. Was it the Titans Return or the first figure? I know it was one of those. It was the first figure and the Titans Return. Oh, Got both it of them. Too, I yeah. think. At least the Legends did. I only have the Legends version of it. But um, I don't think it has a scabbard at all. Maybe it does, and I just didn't put it on her, and I forgot it existed, which is entirely possible. She's been... Well, just check the box before you throw it away. Oh, yeah, definitely. I already did all that, and it's I've definitely got all the parts out. I just don't remember if it had a scabbard. But um, one thing she doesn't come with, with a lot of like model kits and um, high-end anime toys do come with, and I think it's just like Transformers don't usually come with alternate faces, and she doesn't come with alternate faces. And I feel like a figure like this would normally have alternate faces, so it was kind of a lacking thing, just because I would like to have her making an expression. You know, as somebody that's pretty much just buys third-party stuff these days, mostly the masterpiece level stuff, everything has alternate faces now. Yeah. All the time, always. Like even Takara, you know, they announced Trailbreaker. He's got alternate faces. You know, so it's. I'm like, what do you mean Transformers don't have alternate faces? They always do. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I feel like, though, you don't need an alternate face. You just need an expressionate face. That's usually what it is. Like, I just, the, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm bored of that. So give me something smiling or scowling or something, and I'm right, content. Right, right. And, and I feel like that, too. Like, I, I like this face. I think it's a good face. I would just, I'd rather so have is, her yelling. The face that you have there, is that painted or is that all just detailed? The face reverse? comes fully painted. So that's you nice. do not need to mess with the face, which is another thing I, I should have said. Because it's really nice. Because the place where you're going to mess up the paint the most and hate yourself for it is the face. And you don't have to do it on this one. Because it's fully painted. I wouldn't want any more paint on it. So thing I feel I, like with oh, oh sorry. I was just gonna say that one thing about this figure that might bug you, it does bug me, is that the gold stickers are roughly the same color as my generic gold paint, right? Like they're the regular metallic gold. All the gold plastic on her is a different color of gold. So it's like, you know, her gold fan on her head is a different color of gold than the gold accents that I've painted on her. And that's just going to be whether you use the stickers or whether you do paint yourself, you're going to run into that problem. And really the only solution would be to paint all the gold parts before you did it. And unfortunately, a lot of the gold parts are actually her joints. So you couldn't really paint those without giving yourself hell. So, you know, if you're a big model kit person, you know how to take care of all that. But if you're the kind of like Transformers collector who just buys a few Flame Toys kits, you probably don't want to mess with painting the joints and parts. Sorry, so did you say that all of her that. joints are gold plastic? <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the case. That is actually the case. All of her um, her elbows, her knees, her ankles, they're all gold plastic. Why does that still happen? Like, Black Zarek came out and you're like, why did you make some of these parts the swirly gold plastic? Why did you do that? That's right. why people wanted a new one. <laughs> they definitely don't exactly. look like... Hey, but we've got another 20 years, Rob, before we have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely don't look like that gold plastic. They just look like plastic that happens to be gold. And hopefully it is just plastic that happens to I, be gold. My feet it's fine. definitely have the swirls in it. I don't know about the arm cannon. I don't see it from... Oh, your yeah. steric feet. Oh, I was Derek, like... Yeah. Oh, was sorry. Like, Rob, you're made out of gold plastic. <laughs> I should see the doctor. That's so harsh. Well, so, so the one thing I will say, like, especially with the anime girl thing and whatever, is like a lot of the Transformers that have come out are like overly sexualized. Like, Nicey is one of those ones where it's like, I'm never going to get this because it's going to make me feel weird. And I know, like, Fans Project was kind of the same way with those like dino gals, which, like, I oh, think yeah. that the concept is cool, but it's like, it, it barely transforms and like literally the only transformation is is that you have to like mess with the like chest and the crotch and i'm like well this is this is great like the one transformation <laughs> is flipping that that stuff around so like it doesn't seem like that's too overly like that felt know. like it was just it was a, barely a transformer but it's also like female dinobot that's cool um but and then they just gave them you know a thin body and that's what you get you just don't have a lot of plastic to work with at the same time and they made the ankles so that they like shatter and it's just it was it was great. only when you sell them to anna the day you sent them to anna they go Psh. no it, it never mine was fine because you I never posed it. i just was like i didn't I, I i think i transformed it once or whatever and i didn't really pose yeah. it and then as soon as you like messed with it it's it Oh, yeah, you still just me. I spent like a day taking cool pictures of it posing and then the ankles said we're leaving see you later if and Sorry, stop. If I never got another Transformer that had heels, that yeah. would be wonderful. Um, so that is that is a complaint I kind of forgot. So she has some like traditional foot binding feet going on, right? They gave her some seriously <laughs> not cool feet. Which are, like, probably to me the most offensive thing on the figure is just, like, they are, like, ridiculously healed to the point where it kind of looks like she has bind bound feet. Um, but the real problem with them is they can't stand, really. Like, on mine, at least, like, I know I happen to get mine a little bit faster than all my friends who were getting her, so nobody else I know has put her together yet. But 
she has to have a stand. That's why yeah. she lives on my cheap figure stand here. She didn't come with her own, so she lives on this one. Oh, bogus. And I assume she came with it. I don't think she did. Like, I, I'm trying to remember her coming with a stand, but I know this is one of my cheap yeah. um, bootleg stands. Uh, uh, yeah. Jeremiah and, in the chat was asking, are there any tips you should keep in mind when building the one blade? So those, um, those circle, I guess they're turbines or whatever on our wings, like those gold circles around it, you have to put those on before you assemble. And I would make the choice on whether if you're going to paint it instead before you started putting it together, which it sounds like you already know that the stickers suck. So definitely um, make that decision first. Um, I recommend just tossing up the sticker sheet and doing paint yourself. Um, the white's going to be hard to get on there because it's white on black plastic, but it'll just take some patience to do. And then the last thing is really watch those arm joints with the sprues. Like you really have to trim those tight. And one of mine, you know, I'm so obsessive with, um, with the way I trim sprues on model kits and it still didn't go together. Right. And I agree with Randall. If you're going to paint, paint it while it's on the sprues. Of course I don't paint though. So I don't paint use the marker. Figure. I just use paint markers to do details and anything that, you know, like if there's a part on the figure <laughs> that's like a big spot that's supposed to be red and they left it white, I'll go in and paint it. But otherwise, yeah. I just leave it as the, it looks better with the rest of my toys if I don't cover it in paint. And I just, I really don't like the fully painted look on figures in general. Also, I don't want to do it. <laughs> that's that's, the, that's the main reason. It's also a pain in the ass to do. I did it once, so that was like all I ever needed to do it in my life. I don't own like an airbrush or anything fancy. Well, so, yeah. it seems I, like overall, it seems like it's a nice looking figure, especially for what's the price for? Is it 40 50 I think it's 50 I think this is still in the, it's like in the middle of the Flame Toys kits because the Flame Toys kits have gotten more expensive. Like I think even that Bumblebee's retails like seventy, and I just can't buy bring myself to buy it because of the retail price. That was the price. worst looking one. It's a it's a weird one. It's a weird one. I think she was put up for pre order back when they were still fifty for the normal size one. So I think we all still got her for fifty. Um, I know these things go on sale a lot at certain stores as well, so you can definitely find them for cheaper prices if you dig around. I think she's worth it, though. Like, that's still, compared to, like, Bandai kits, $50 for a kit of this size is a lot, but I still think she's probably worth it just because she's a unique take on the character. In my opinion, which I know deviates from the actual people who, like, created Windblade story and whatnot, but I think she actually looks the closest to the character art from the comics of any version of Windblade as a toy. Like I think she actually gets closer to the way she was drawn in her own comics because she was drawn in a more like anime style than most of the Transformers comics were. So I think she's really great. And I think she is a little more than most model kits because of the licensing, but you know, she's good. And she was not bad to put together. It didn't take me very long. Like for me, for me, it took me like three or four hours. So for most people, it'll probably take like three or four minutes. So it's more like probably like an hour to two hours for most people. I'm very slow because I'm very meticulous with sprues. Um, but yeah, that's, <sighs> see, I said I'd say a lot. I'm excited about this figure. Like, this was something I've been waiting for for a really long time. Like, I was very excited when this got announced. And it did get changed, right? Like, it got a butt reduction. And it got a ween extension from the changes they made to it. They didn't change it enough that it made it not cool anymore. It's still a great-looking design, but they did make changes, which slowed it down by seemingly, like, a year. <sighs> All right. I get it all out. <laughs> all right. Well, <clears throat> I guess I'll go. Um, so I, since I don't feel like my figure is all that exciting, but um, anyway, my figure is the uh, new laser prime. Uh, so in uh, legacy. Um, so he is somewhat based off of the uh, old Optimus prime mold. Like, 
I get like some of the uh, legs are you know that share tooling, um, but uh, a lot of obviously the like uh, top like you know this part, the transformation is different, um, and the um, like the upper uh, chest does not share tooling uh, with it. So um, here it is. I'm not a hundred percent sure that I would recommend this figure. Like it's okay. Um, I know Rob it has a trailer, look, right? What's that? Oh, and then it has the, yeah, the trailer is like right, okay. right here too. So, I mean, it's probably worth it. I mean, if you're like, oh, I don't have a laser prime. In my Already recanted. Right. If it's not a bad figure, right? Like there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but, uh, I was telling Anna that I didn't think she should get it because I actually kind of think that the proportions are a little bit weird and Anna was like, oh my gosh, if you're actually telling me that you think the proportions are weird, it mu it's going to bug the crap out of me. Um, but they like, look weird to me in the same way that that Optimus mold has always looked a little weird. Like his legs are too long and his chest is too yeah. squat. And, well, his, like the know, legs, and his arms the are a little long. The legs just long. feel even longer just because it's like a lot of gray on there. And then the shoulders. So Boombox like, shoulders. Like the, the smokestacks. But like if you take that up. Like, his, like, shoulders just look really, really weird. I don't know. Like, it, it, yeah. it just almost seems, like, too long. And then, the, like, the head, like, the, just the way that it's recessed. And, and I don't know. Like, I really love the original Laser Prime figure. Like, it is a really, really cool mold. Like, especially for the time, just compared to, like, it was a lot of It's huge for the time. Stuff. It's huge. Like, it has a ton of play value and everything. Um I mean, I think that this figure, like, it has a nice deco. Like, it looks pretty good. It does a lot of the things well. Um, I mean, it has the articulation all that. But, um, oh, I was going to mention, too, like, the, like, this flips up, like, these parts. So there's, like, little cannons and stuff. It does have um, a matrix that you um, can, if I can get the chest. This chest, there we go. Got it. The chest, the chest does flip up, so you can like, you know, get to, uh, you know, there's like a matrix inside and everything, um, and then you have the trailer. Like the trailer is kind of neat as far as um, that. If I can, <clears throat> if I can take it apart, but uh, it does some of the like play feature, you know, stuff where you can like flip it around and. Um, there is um, a little base defense thing. turret Yeah, you can thing. make like a defense turret and like, you know, kind of have like a little cannon that shoots like this top, this top part, like, you know, flips around to be a cannon. So it does all that. It has like a bunch of pegs if you want to plug other stuff in. I've seen people where they like plugged in a cog to the base to kind of make extra, extra stuff and whatnot. So like it does a lot of the things. It doesn't, you know, seem as impressive. And I know that this is kind of the same thing with, um, like, the Galaxy Prime that came out, right? Like, the original figure was just, like, this huge chunk. And, like, th the Laser Prime is kind of the same way, where it's, like, this huge chunk. And, like, this is, like, half the amount of plastic as the original one. And so, like, I think it does a lot of the things. But I'm just not sure that I would, like, necessarily recommend, you know, doing this now. I may, like, when Toy Hacks comes out with their sticker set and it has, like, cool stickers on the side that, like, resemble the original toy, I might, you know, kind of change I can tell you they're going to suck bit. to apply. Yeah, they Because it's not going to be one big one on the side. It's right. going to have to be little all, strips. There's, and... like, all this detailing yep. and stuff like that. So, um, but, yeah, so, like, it's not bad. Like, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad figure, but it's not something where you'd be, like, you it didn't blow it you away in hand and it's not it's not blowing me away like but again like i don't know what to expect compared to like i feel like that uh you know we did the legacy bulkhead right and that kind of surprises because i was going to be down on that and i you know i wasn't expecting much and then we got it and it was like oh it seems like a cool figure for really for voyager good. whereas like this one is kind of like the opposite for me whereas like it i guess it checks all the boxes but at the same time it's not something where i'm like Oh man, like I really need this in my collection in my life. That toy hack set better come with a disc launcher 
or an air missile. One or the other, because without without those cool shooting accessories for that age, yeah. it's just not what the it, same weird toy. What it kind of when you? I mean, it comes with like a little shield, inner John, whatever. So I guess this kind it of it kind of looks like a disc. It kind of looks like a disc thing. There you go. Like it reminds me of the uh, was it? I think it was Fans Project or, or Make Toys that released a kit that was the trailer for. The basically the red type prime we got mold we got like in, I don't remember classics or universe or something I can't even remember uh-huh. anymore. Oh yeah, it's but yeah, sense. yeah we had that kit. Now like I had that figure for a long time, and I think I would rather have that than what you have there. Oh no 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 no! I would rather have this than that. I did not like like now. The base toy like there I'm... is probably better, but the trailer was definitely way better for make toys, but I... it also costs a lot more. Well, I I don't know. I'm just so over a lot of the extreme parts forming and like that era like all the city commander and like the make toys ones and there's like a bunch of them where like it just was not fun to like it was just extreme parts forming you know so like i never liked that that base now to each their own i'm sure there's plenty of people that like that that better and thought it was a cool uh design like if you so just like, used it for the base in the trailer it was fine you didn't have to like power him up with it or anything right and that part i thought was neat. I mean, because it represented the trailer, but so, I think please. for me, like, what I'm seeing a lot from the legacy line, and this is a key example here, is it just feels like smaller, less interesting versions of the originals. <laughs> you know, yeah. just kind of like maybe not the kickback because we haven't gotten a, like a good generations kickback really. Um, but the the rest, I mean, a lot of them is just like, oh, Prime did it better. The original red toy is better. The blah, blah, blah did it better. You know, here's a bulkhead that is fits nothing. That doesn't mean it's a bad toy or anything, but it's if you want a bulkhead, I would rather have animated or prime toys. I mean, it's kind of hard. It's like kind of depends on what you want in your collection. I actually like, um, I didn't think I was going to like the prime toys, but I actually kind of like them because they fit in my collection. Whereas, like, if. Like, the original Prime toys just are not going to fit. Like, I'm going to have to have my own shelf no. of, of those yeah. or whatever. So, like, I actually like those a lot more. Like, I, I spent all this time complaining about it, and then I actually kind of like those okay. Um, and, again, maybe it's, like, that I, you know, I really love Laser Prime. I love the original mold. So maybe that's kind of part of it that's going into it. Um, you know, but, you know, at the same time, I know we probably talked about this. It's, like, you don't have to buy it. Like, you don't have to, you know, if it's not something that interests you. Um, so, you know, like, there's certain ones where, um, you know, like the kickback and uh, uh, the Minasaur, like, you know, all that. Like, I mean, those excite me. Um, but, you know, that's, that's where I kind of feel like some of these where it's like, eh, it like, it, it checks the box. And I think some of those, too, is like, they're doing a lot of, like, reissues. Um, like the Galvatron, right? Where it's like, you know, begrudgingly buy it because it doesn't have the space mud. You got to think, but it's like, that's not exciting. So it's like all those leader, you know, figures, but I don't know, at the same time, like there's a blaster in that wave um, that if you didn't get the blaster in um, the, whatever it was, what was the last line? Kingdom. If you didn't get a Kingdom blaster, like that, that figure is fantastic. Like we reviewed that. So it's like, go get that if you... That's good. Um, kind of thing. So it's like the Voyagers are kind of the star of the show of, of the wave, and like they still have some, you know, the deluxes aren't bad. Like, but the leaders, like, again, like it does all the things. I have no real complaints about it, other than the proportions look kind of wonky. But like, yeah. it's a good, it's a good figure, but it's not something where it's like, oh, thank God, I was really, you know, my collection was not complete until I had a smaller Laser Prime than what I do. What is the just, price point on leaders today? Fifty. Fifty. So I just feel like with how much of a pedestal we have the original Laser Prime on, right? Like it was so much better than anything that was out when it came out. In order to be proportional, in order to get that same amount of excitement, what would you have had to open, right? Like it would have had to be like a masterpiece level toy for $50 in order for you to feel the level of like excitement you felt getting laser prime back when our toys were still bricks. Well, the thing that's also hard too is, is fans hobby 
did a absolutely fantastic Laser Prime like years ago, right? And that toy still holds up. And they did a really <coughs> cool trailer with that too. And now, obviously, yeah. it's a completely day because this is fifty dollars, and the fans' hobby. By the time you buy the the trailer and the figure itself, pretty like expensive box or whatever um, yeah. from that. But like, it's it's totally worth it. Like, if that's what you're looking for, and you get that figure, and you're like, okay, this is this is the upgrade I was looking for from the original. Where like, this isn't really that. It fits into your collection, like so. If you want a proportionate, like figure that goes with all the rest of your stuff, kind of like Christian and I do, then it's like, okay, cool. Here we go. Here it is. But it's not something where you're like, oh man, thank God I have this. So. I think to, to Anna's point, like, what could they have done to make it exciting? I, I think it's, it's it brings up the the core problem of why would you do it then? If you know you can't make it more interesting or more special than the original, but I get like you can't go and buy that one on the shelf today. You're gonna pay aftermarket prices, and I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's more than fifty bucks. Especially if you want it to have at least some of the discs, right? You <laughs> know, so many of those I'm sure are lost. Um, well, and the thing that's hard too is is like they always want to have an Optimus Prime on the shelf. And so it's like, what are they going to do? Do you yeah. want them just to like re-release the Earthrise Optimus Prime in perpetuity? Like, you know, or like, I guess at least they're giving us like a different version of, of Prime. And I mean, you know, so. is that necessarily a bad thing? You know, like if you buy, yeah, like if you buy Ninja Turtles, for example, and let's pretend that cartoons lasted more than two years these days. I mean, your kids want to go out and buy a Leonardo. You know, so they need to be, it needs to be on the shelf. You know, I guess we don't really have that much, again, right now, because of the cartoons just don't last long. They're, it's a much different world. You know, Ninja Turtles was on there for 10 years, which, you know, I think most of us were done after a couple of years, but it was on a long time. Um, but, like, I know when, um, like, when Mattel ran the, uh, the classics line of He-Man, like, and Super 7 started doing it too eventually towards the end of them having the license but like they always tried to have like a he-man and skelter that you could buy that way you could jump in at any time and if there's not like a good representative optimus prime on the shelf you know if you were wanting a g1 optimus i don't know that that fits the bill it's like on the one hand yeah there's an optimus on there but i kind of wonder if fans would be more happy if they kind of more regularly you know reissued or repackaged some of the staples as opposed to here's a slight redesign or now with less space mud and then they feel suckered into buying it versus they just ran the same figure again and said, Hey, you know, this is just for people that are jumping in or people that, you know, need to start somewhere and they want a prime and a bumblebee and a sound wave and whatever. Um, They've shown recently that they're willing to release even like a leader prime without his trailer, you know, as a figure by itself when it has a trailer they just don't put the trailer in that one. So, like, they can do that. They can keep a Prime on the shelf that is always that Prime. And I and think they, it sells. And, and they've done some reissues of some of the big figures. Like, Scorponok had multiple runs. You know, and that's a large figure. But, you know, they, they won't keep rerunning it in perpetuity. They'll keep they'll rerun it for, like, maybe a year, you know, and then they stop. But And then it's I like, mean, well, you want a Scorponok and you came in this year or next year? You better hope they made too many a couple of years ago and there's still some retailers sitting on it, you know, or else you're just going to pay through the roof. I mean, I, I am personally excited for when they re-release the Earthrise Prime again, uh, but then they do some slight deco uh, differences and then they paint up the trailer. Um, and so then I will, you know, end up getting that, even though I've already spent like a gazillion dollars on sticker sets and, and upgrade kits and all that on the trailer that we have now, I can go ahead and rebuy it and then I can put those sets on, on that Stop one. Stop hitting so. yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> That's a good point though, Rob, because it's like a lot of these minor deco change figures, like the Lucases will go and buy them, but they really aren't so much for us as they're for people who missed the original release of it. And, you know, now you can get it. And yeah, it looks a little bit different. So that might get some of the hardcore Hasbro collectors to go grab a new version. But what it's really doing is just keeping the toy on the shelf for yeah. more people to get. And that, that Earthrise slash um, 
slash Siege Prime mold, you know, both of those are really, really good Optimus mm-hmm. Prime toys. So people should get to own them. And I don't need more, but other people can go buy them yeah. when they release it with like slightly bluer noses or whatever. Like the one risk with the slight deco change stuff is like eventually it'll backfire because people yeah. are already bitching about it a lot. And eventually they'll be like, finally, I'm cutting it out. And then they'll start cutting other stuff they don't like. And so then they're buying less overall. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. But you know, I, I don't know. It, Transformers is in a tough spot because they both want retail presence and they sell to collectors. And I think that right. it can make it a harder line to straddle. You know, as opposed to like, again, Super 7, which if they want to rerun like the first wave of Ninja Turtles and their Ultimates line, they'll just rerun it and say, hey, we're opening orders again. You can buy them or they'll say, we're running the four Turtles as a wave now, now that they're all done. And you can rebuy that to get people in. Whereas Hasbro doesn't really have that avenue it's just what goes on the shelf that's that's what we make you know i mean i i do think like it gives collectors again more choice to that if you wanted that slightly different one or you want a springer that is the toy deco instead of you know its own thing that you can have that or if you want something that's more the animation deco uh that you know you can get the studio series and whatever so like i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing it's like again we don't have to buy it it's it's fine you know just because i'm a crazy person and i am buying it then whatever i don't know i i don't i don't think that it's like people like us that they're really ever gonna have to worry about us and we're such a small (laughs) sliver you know what i mean of the collecting community like like the extreme like who's the person that's like not necessarily buying everything that's like that that person that's actually gonna quit i don't know i like i I don't know how many you know yeah but i I don't think that you're really that market anymore like i don't not anymore but i used to be that wouldn't have mattered like like but them reissuing it with smite small deco differences is not what got you to quit it's like masterpiece no. and third parties, which you like something that's nice. This is what I was interested in. Like that's yeah. more what you're interested in and whatever. So, but like, I think someone like Christian, like, you know, Christian has stopped buying every, like if he doesn't want it, he won't buy it. He, he doesn't feel the need to just buy it out of uh, compulsion as much as he used to, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're all kind of there, you know, I know Peter, talked a lot of about us are as well and, 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 and whatever. And like, I haven't bought, everything close i i'm, I'm pretty close on buying all the, the of this stuff like the the mainline stuff but uh but yeah i don't know this is this is why we have a podcast to talk through these things rob so that uh mm-hmm. you know it's, it's cheaper than therapy like compulsion purchasing doesn't feel good on legacy like it did still feel good on siege and earth rise because those were like all like everything was really good but, like, when you buy something just out of, like, compulsion, like, I really don't want to open that spike. It's in my closet. It's there. And, oh, why, why did I order that? Like, See, right, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, oh. Because now, again, like, since I don't collect Masterpiece and I don't have that uh, Bumblebee anymore, like, I don't have that spike. And so, like, I want a, a spike in the exosuit. And the piece of junk that came with the Grimlock, like, is not cutting it for me. So I, I'm actually happy to, to have that. What so about I, the I'm buzzworthy not... one? You have the uh, buzzworthy one, too, right? I do have the buzzworthy one. But again, like, that's just not <laughs> doing it for me. That thing is tiny and, and whatever. So. so why'd you buy it? Oh, I, I wanted the buzz. It came with the buzzworthy figure. It wasn't its own. Oh, thing. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why did I, I buy that bee. Buzzworthy Bumblebee? Since I already own like God knows how many Bumblebees, that that that's a great question, Rob. But at least three. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Should we let Rob talk about his thing? Yeah, since what, he came on as like a pseudo sure. guest. All right. right, I know. For microcasters, you usually do recent stuff, but for Oof, you do whatever you've got. And we so also I, aim for thirty minutes at microcasters, and we're on forty-five. So I think we're off yeah. the rails tonight. Um, uh, so there's not a lot to say about what I bought, so I'm going to yammer before I show it. Um, it's important to me because it marks a milestone in my collection. It is the last G1 mold that I'm likely to ever buy that I don't have. The only other one I won't have after this is Bumper. 
Um, the only other G1 stuff I won't have are a few of the like you know crazy Japanese repaints, which I have some of those, but like Guard City and Battle Gaia, um, Great Shot, Ranger, Double Clouder. You know, as I as I go on the list, they get less and less different from the U.S. release. But I've got this in last week, which is yeah. Probably means my G1 collection, at least from a figure standpoint, is complete unless I pick up a bumper someday. And that is Action Master Trax with his bits. The gun is a repro gun, which if you buy those rare Action Masters, especially the G1 guys they redid in Europe, almost all the weapons are repro. And the good news is everyone's pretty good about labeling it and calling it out. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's not a lot as far as the toy goes. It does transform a little more than the model kit. Because, you know, he has his silly little backpack tank thing that when you press the button, bloop, becomes his helmet, whatever. It's the dumbest thing. It's great. And then after that, yeah, it's just tracks. He's tracks with the G.I. Joe build like every other Action Master. Um, but, you know, at least his sticker isn't garbage. But, yeah, I bought it off a guy on Facebook uh, in the G1 group um, who was sawing off a lot of his uh, European Action Masters and stuff. Um yeah, that's it. He looks so to be in really good shape, though. It's in really nice shape. It's it's really nice. Like, I mean, the hips are a little wobbly, like every Action Master ever. because And that's just kind of the design, you know, that they have on him. Uh, but other than that, no, he's really nice. He's in good shape. And that's kind of, yeah, it's... My Action Masters are definitely complete. Um, all I'm missing, even remotely there, is uh, side swipes partner vanguard his little turrets and i'm just giving that up you know, you know I'm, I'm good <laughs> everything else like i have a few repro parts here and there in my collection um like my art fire and my uh minerva have some reproduction parts um my metro titan is, is a long story behind it it's not all original um but yeah like I said, maybe, maybe i'll get a bumper someday but yeah it's kind of that's a, that's the last one if y'all remember when i was hosting ouch like I bought a bunch of Axter Masters there mm -hmm. in that time, and I was really filling it out. I could never get a track at a price I wanted to pay, at least. Like, there were just multiple hundred dollars. And he sold this, I think it was for 160 I think. Which, it's not like it's cheap, but when you're used to dropping money like that on every third-party figure you buy, um, you know, you, you can budget it in. And uh, so, yeah, it's all the Axter Masters done. And basically my G1, which, is, again, has been pretty done for a while, you know, just I think that's, that's, that's about it. Maybe yeah, maybe one day I'll pick up like a great shot in a bumper or something. But, you know, it's those will just have to be really off the cuff whims, you know, see it at TFCon at a good price type of thing. And, you know, I'm not I'm not hunting it. Whereas I've been looking for tracks for a long, long time. And, you know, just nothing ever shows up other than like four hundred dollar, five hundred dollar auctions on eBay. And I just wasn't going to do it. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I do feel like you'll have that where you go to the next TFCon after you're like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do a great shot or whatever. And, and then you go and Transformer Land will be there and and you'll be like, oh, do you guys have? And, and, and they'll just happen to have I'll it. Have it. Have no, it. he always has great shots. I mean, maybe he does it uh, before, but I have picked up great shots in his bins multiple times, multiple years, debating if I wanted to get it or not. Cause, but that was back when it used to be like, three four hundred dollars you know with both weapons maybe a little fading discoloration but not like you know butter yellow or anything and nothing broken and right now the auctions on ebay are even more than that so it's like you know you get stuck in that old price because we're old and it's like right. i didn't want to buy that when that was three four hundred dollars i'm definitely not going to pay six seven hundred anymore because I'm, I'm fine without it i have a really nice six shot that i bought from uh, nick several years back it's a really good condition and you know, I'm content and yeah, maybe again, maybe one day, but it's if nothing else. There's still no new molds other than bumper or everything else I have. Pretty sure. So what you just said about those old prices makes you want to give a quick basic psychology lesson to everyone that those cognitive anchors that we develop and we don't want to move away from, those are actually for our protection. Those are actually healthy mechanisms to keep us mm. from doing things that don't make sense to us. So it's actually great that those old prices stick around and keep us to really actually notice how ridiculous some of these prices get 
at these points. Like, oh, I, I'm glad I have them sometimes when I can yeah. say, you know, like I really did see $60 of value in that item 10 years ago. But right now I just, it's not a $300 item and it's never been. And mm -hmm. I don't need it that much. I, I mean, it's nice and protective. You know, and there was a time where I wouldn't have spent a hundred something bucks on an action right. master, any of them. And now I've, the last several I bought were like that because they're expensive, except for my side swipe that I got for three bucks, but it had no parts and it was in a junk bin and I just got lucky. But I'm the so accessories lucky. cost more than three dollars. <laughs> but uh, well, that, um, that's the thing that's always it's funny with those. And, um, you know, part of the reason that it can be somewhat hard to sell incomplete figures like that is everyone wants a complete one because you're never going to find the parts like it's just. It's almost impossible for all of those those weird, you know, European variants or, um, you know, some of the yeah. uh, Japanese. Or you're going to pay them. more right. if you buy the parts individually. Like the side swap wasn't too bad. There's a bunch of his partner out there, but he almost never has the black things. And somehow I missed an auction that had them that went for the same price as the ones without it. And I, it must have just sold before like my eBay email could come in for the morning even. I was really mad when I, when I saw that. I missed it. Um, but you know, it's like, I got the rest of it. I got a repro gun for it and it's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. Like if you try to buy the, uh, turbo master and you're like, you get one that's incomplete and you want to buy the parts on it, but you're going to pay so much more than finding one complete. So it's, much. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But no. Yep. Milestone day. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty well, exciting. It's exciting to share this yeah. milestone with you, Rob. Yeah. And cool like, thing is when you get an action master in that condition, it's never going to look worse because you're not going to mess with it enough to damage <laughs> it. So you're going to have it as a shiny little, shiny little trophy. Forever. I'm going to break it, setting it on my shelf. It's, I'm going to set that. Don't do it. No. Like, what? Why are you, I'm just going to set it down. Like, <laughs> just have it float in the sky. So it's that's sweet. what happened to my, the MMC, um, their six shot type figure. Remember they had years back. Yeah. yeah. I was, I set it on the shelf and the hip just disintegrated. Oh, no. I was like, oh. Like I, it was, there was literally no pressure. I just set it down and went. Phew. I was like, okay. And that's weird. It, that's like that's actually a problem with that figure. It just took years for it to be realized uh, as a problem. You know, like uh, at the time nobody knew. It just it's one of those you find out later. Oh, the plastic they use for that, and I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose because MMC is a great company. You know, it's just like that plastic didn't keep. Just I like don't Metroplex mind is white. Is it same? Oh, now I'm worried. Mine, I feel like it's been fine, but of course I'll I'll pull it out of storage or something, and it'll be. You know, disintegrated, and I'll be like, "Well, I mean, I've I haven't played with mine in a while, but he stands on my siege shelf because he is my six shot." I mean, that's all mine did was stand on the shelf, and I went to, to pick it up. I was actually moving it to the cell bin. <laughs> I'm worried went. about him. Uh, oh, yeah, mine's like, never going to the cell bin. He's so perfect. The, the thing is, I don't know if it'll still be the case, but when that happened, I googled about, it, and that's when I found out some other people had it, and that figure was long out of production. At yeah. that time, some people actually emailed MMC and got a replacement part for it. Which is insane that they still had some replacement parts around. Um, I didn't bother though. I just I didn't care. Um, yeah. But yeah, I still sold it on eBay with the broken hip for like seventy, eighty bucks or something. <laughs> Stupid. That's crazy. It's like the. I mean, I didn't hide it. It was very clear. You know, I'm not that type of person. It's like this thing is broken. You are welcome to do what you want with it. You can super glue it back together. I don't care. You know, whatever. All right. All yours, buddy. Have fun. I paid less than that for mine. That's in good condition. I was going to say, yeah. I, I think I, I managed to get mine, like, during the downturn, so. Mm. I got mine during the downturn, too. Yeah. I got mine when you could buy a, a box of old third party and get, like, you know, 20 figures for $100, and you've got a bunch of old eye gear and old MMC, <laughs> and it was just so much fun to get all that back in the day. And, like, most of it I ended up reselling for way more than i paid for it because the prices went back up but it was just a lot of fun i know we've talked about it sometimes before but it's it's always fun to see the item that was a shelf warmer or online clearance heavily for months and months and months and then a year later two years later no one else has redone that figure and that's the only place to get it the only way to get it and like for that character and it's through the roof it's just, the classic, I, I feel like, of that figure is the, uh, what is it, X-Trans Bots Ollie? That's one of them that I was directly thinking of. He's reissued that like five times there, now. I think there, he's actually getting reissued again. 
And yes. it's just like one of those things where it's like everyone just reluctantly buys it because you're like, well, I hate that figure. But like that's the only masterpiece the, or whatever, like that scale of that. The, the latest thing. versions are fine. They aren't the hot garbage the first one was. Like it's still not amazing or anything, but right. it's totally fine. You know, mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's and like the eye gear um, Tetra Jets. I haven't looked in a while, but I know at one point they were worth a lot. That's crazy. You know, and those things were hard clearanced yeah. because they are pretty hot trash. I enjoy the the Tetra Jet mode. After that, yeah, they're other than that, they are they are hot trash. Although the those Alicon- sine waves so bad, like they they go real cheap and then they get real expensive, and then they go real cheap again, and I just I don't get it. Like I always think they look terrible. So I always it, just watch the it, price it. of confusion. Although I'll stand behind Eye Gear's uh, Alicon figure, I actually still really like that. It's one. good. It's fine. It fits in with G1 so well, and it looks cool. So I'm down with it. I really like their um, their Outback. I still use their Outback as my Outback. I think he's I a think really fun the, toy. The only thing that annoyed me about all those figures is that they didn't. Most of them, they didn't do the right colors. Like Outback is white. So yeah, it's, it's like, and that bothers other people, um, not Anna's. The guy that designed those was really unhappy with how it went. Like he designed them in the small scale that the first two came out of, and that's how they were all supposed to be. And then Iger got it and decided to uplarge the rest of them, and he was like, "No, that's not how they're made." And he was upset with that. And then I think the colors was just a goof. It's like you know, you tell the factory it should be in this color, they send you the test shot, it looks fine, and then they do the whole run and it's wrong, and you're just screwed. You know, because Gears was and Swerve were a little off. Like maybe Gears was okay. Swerve was like too salmony colored or something. I can't remember. Yeah. But I just remember yeah, they were. Yeah. You know, Beachcomber Gears was almost too so baby big. blue. Yeah, and they're. Yeah, they were all weird, like yeah. colors and stuff. But yeah. Ah, so. uh, I gear. They got so big. It was so weird how large they were. I remember getting, yeah. like I said, I got that box of all. I still have the before. Cosmos. So big. The Cosmos is okay. It's it's a unique He's been toy. Outclassed. I have it. He's been outclassed these days, but yeah. he's all right. I have the Pathfinder recolor of it, and it's a mm-hmm. it's a cool piece of my collection. Well, a, like I like it. exclusive, I think. Yeah. But it didn't sell well, so then it just became a everywhere. Please buy it. <laughs> but a lot of those did, yeah. A lot of the ones where they did the GoBots out of those. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's unique. It means and... it's probably like eight hundred dollars on eBay now. I don't think it's shot up yet, but it, it recovered. It didn't. It went to the trash, and then it came back to the normal world. Uh, 50, 50 bucks, 55 bucks. So There's a lot a more shafts. Like back in the day, you could, like, again, you get it in clearance, boom. Yeah. But, anyway, so. Well, there we awesome. go. Well, we well, had that's quite exciting. the variety tonight, right? Yeah, we, had a, yeah. we had a boring mainline figure, an awesome model kit, and a fantastic action master. Yeah. Same with They're the all good fantastic. and with the, with the uh, boring, so. Yep. No, we all seem like happy kids tonight with our various toys, so that's I good. I don't know if Lucas was happy or not, because he started off he's with, well, I happy. couldn't recommend it, and he's like, I started agreeing with him. He's like, well, it's actually pretty good. You know, he no, no, enjoyed no, talking good. about I it. I said there's us. nothing wrong with it, is, is what I'm saying, but I, I feel like me saying a mainline figure that there's nothing wrong with it, like, is is faint praise you know what i mean like i'm not i'm i'm not trashing it but yeah it's i i get that right right so anyway well thank you guys for joining me tonight it was nice to actually be back on on a thursday night here so hopefully we'll actually get back in the swing of things uh again here pretty soon uh but uh thank you to uh randall in the chat and uh we also, we'll hopefully post uh, in the future when we're actually having these shows so that people know to show up. But, of course, everyone can, you know, watch on Facebook um, as well uh, down the road. So, but um, anyway, I guess that's it. And uh, book club this week is, what is it, Lost Light? Is it three, three and four? Three and four. Yeah. We're finally going to Yep, yep. That's uh, tftalk.net uh, Discord um, on 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, so on Sunday night. So, 
All right. Well, thanks, guys. And we will see you next week.